the world became a superhuman society, with about 80% of the population possessing some uncanny ability. Our streets looked like scenes from comic books. As cities swirled with chaos and confusion, a new profession dominated our collective consciousness. It was an age of heroes. So now that we are getting into Boku no Hero itself, the best place to start is the start, specifically the first two episodes. The first two episodes are what sold me on Boku no Hero, made it blow by pretty much everything else that was airing at the time, and proved to me that it had the potential to be a show I love. Now, it is true that a good start isn't everything, as seen by certain other shows that aired that season, but the strong foundation set in these first two episodes is one of the keys to Boku no Hero's success, and is a great demonstration of how to start an anime. Specifically, it introduced an interesting story, had likable characters, established the world, introduced the themes, and then amplified all these by having great production values. And because of all this, it was able to convey more of an emotional punch in two episodes than 99% of anime are able to in their entire runtime. I ended up rewatching the first two episodes to make this video, and I'm even more amazed now than I was before. So let's get into how these first two episodes work as a foundation that the rest of the show builds from. The show does a wonderful job of setting up the initial story arc. 30 seconds in, and we have a likable main character, an antagonist we want to hate, and a challenge that seems impossible for the main character to overcome. It may be simple conflict, but the important thing is at this point is to sell the viewer on the premise, which I would say it did quite well. Then we get some of Deku talking about his dreams, how despite the fact that the world isn't a fair place, he's still someone chasing after his dreams, and I absolutely love this mindset, because the world is not fair. Not only does this make any goals that Midoriya achieves mean something, it also serves as an encouragement to the viewer that you should keep following your dreams despite the ways that the world may be stacked against you. These first couple scenes serve to make us start caring about Izuku, and one of the most important things for a show to do is to establish some sort of connection early on, typically with the main character. Once the show hits that point, it then moved on to some exposition about the world and how most of the world has some kind of quirk. This gives us greater context about why Izuku not having a quirk is such a big deal. He's surrounded by superheroes, sees fights between them and villains on a regular basis. And a point that the show touches upon here is the heroes fighting for fame and credit, not just because they want to do good in the world. It doesn't do a lot with this point early on, but it becomes important later on, and I will get more into this in a future video. I also love the introduction of Bakugo here, where his first non-flashback line establishes his role and character, which then builds into the rivalry between him and Izuku that was seen in their past and is now continuing into the main story. Then we get the scene where Izuku was constantly watching the video of All Might saving so many people, showing how he and the world view All Might. The world looks for a hero, the one who can and does save everyone. We know that Deku won't develop a quirk that he is so desperate to, but the contrast between the scene with him watching All Might and the doctor telling him that it is impossible is still so powerful. Then there is Deku watching the screen with tears in his eyes, asking his mother if there was still hope, only to not get the answer that he wants. Each of these scenes is showing the odds further and further stacked against Deku that he can't be a hero because he does not have a quirk. Then All Might comes into the story when Deku is attacked by the slime monster and despite Deku trying to fight off the monster there is just not that much he can do until All Might comes and saves him. And I love All Might. He is the over-the-top hero and adds so much to the story and the message. But the important thing here is that after after saving Deku, the truth about him is revealed. Oh uh, yeah, by the way, this series of videos will contain spoilers, so if you want to avoid them, just go watch the entire anime right now. I mean, that takes like a day, and you should do that. You really should. Actually, this video will only spoil episodes 1 and 2, but the rest of them, yeah, everything. Go have fun watching. 
Anyway, we see that All Might is not all powerful and that the image he puts on for the public is only an act. I love his line, there's plenty of fear behind that smile. All Might shows that the life of a hero isn't so glamorous, that there is a powerful evil in the world that cannot be beaten without strength, and he tells Deku that he cannot be a hero without a quirk. It felt like episode 1 was building up to this moment, having the people all around Deku see that he couldn't be a hero in one way or another, only to have All Might show up with Deku asking All Might this question at the end of the episode. Traditional storytelling would leave one to believe that All Might would encourage Deku at this point and say there could be a way, but he doesn't and instead puts a final nail in the coffin of Deku's dreams. At least, that's what would have happened had Deku's desire to be a hero just been surface level. We hear Deku's internal monologue, how he had started to come to grips with the fact that he was just avoiding reality. And I find this line to be such a standout one because of how well it resonates with the target audience. Many viewers of these types of anime are drawn to the idea of a hero, and by watching a show like this, they are escaping a reality where superpowers don't exist. So in a way, Deku is coming to grips with the same thing the viewers of this type of anime must, that they cannot have the superpowers they see on TV. Even though his dreams of having great powers were taken from him, his dream, or actually his desire to be a hero, was still there. As was seen by him going to the site of the battle where the slime monster had just captured Bakugo. And Deku is terrified, for completely justified reasons. Keep in mind, Deku was nearly killed by this monster only a few moments ago, and he is also blaming himself for the fact that the monster got free. And then there's All Might also standing off to the side powerless, seeing himself as a failure and a fraud. Again, I love the contrast between the person we see here and the hero that was built up all throughout the first episode through everything that Deku believed All Might was. All around the other heroes are giving up, saying that a real hero will come soon, someone with the right quirk to save the day. But the person who moves into battle is Deku, the one without any quirk and the one who had just given up on being a hero. He isn't able to do much, puts up a little bit of a to get to Bakugo, but what he does is inspire All Might to leap into battle, going beyond what his body seemed capable of. An outsider would not see Deku as being a hero here. They would simply see All Might showing up to save the day. They would not know that All Might was loathing his own failures only seconds prior. They would not know that Deku was the one that spurred All Might into action. They would not know the difference that Deku's courage made that day. It is said that courage is not a lack of fear, but it is moving forward despite the fear. And then, when All Might runs into Deku after the battle, he delivers the greatest line I have heard about what it means to be a hero. Then, All Might reveals that Deku can be a hero. The first two episodes were building up to this one moment, and it was just so powerful. So many people wrote Deku off, even All Might. But Deku proved the world wrong by rushing in anyway and indirectly saving Bakugo's life. Deku showed that it is not power that makes someone hero, but the courage to strive for a way for justice to be served. Then it is revealed that the entire series is the story of how Deku becomes the greatest hero. At the start of the video, I talked about the four things that this first episode did so well, and that was establish the world, the story, the characters, and the message. The world is introduced at the start of the first episode, Episode with the explanation of quirks, the story is simple to see, and the show actually tells it to you directly at the end of episode 2, but this really gives the direction to the story to go, something that Gigik talked about in his video about shonen anime, which goes into this in more detail. The characters were wonderful here, having a likable underdog Deku, the charismatic but flawed All Might, and the arrogant Bakugo. We understand and feel for all these characters, and they all go through a character arc in these first two episodes to really bring them to life. And then lastly, the message about what it means to be a hero, well, this could not get much more obvious. All this was brought to life with some great directing and animating, along with the soundtrack that perfectly conveys the emotions. I know that most people do not consider shonen anime the ones with the most emotional impact, but again, these first two episodes filled me with more emotion than pretty much any other anime I have seen. Boku no Hero may be cliche, it may not be new, but it executes these tropes so well that it feels like I'm seeing them for the first time again. And well, that's one of the reasons I love this show so much. So, thank you for watching this second part of this great insane series, and I'm glad I got to talk to you about these two episodes, because I've really wanted to go into depth with them before, and I think I finally nailed what I want to say. At least until I think of something else, which maybe next year, we'll see. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I will see you all next time.